The following story contains adult themes and depictions of violence and trauma. This podcast is not for children. Please be advised. My bed was softer than usual, and my mouth was dry. Dear goddess, I really need to stop drinking like I do. My eyes opened slowly. A lavish golden chandelier hung from above me. Wait a minute. I don't have a chandelier. This isn't my room. It might be a guest room? That's what happened, right? Yes, I remember now. (sighs) 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 Fuck. Oh my goddess! We didn't! No! We didn't! (sighs) We're fully clothed. (sighs) Oh. You remember what happened last night? Yes. Okay. I do too. And you meant everything you said? Yes. When I became the captain of the Remnant Mercenaries, I set rules and boundaries for myself and my group. First, if a mercenary ever violated their contract, I should report it to the Prince. However, if the violation wasn't harmful to themselves or their work, then there's no good reason to bring it up. Second, I vowed never to violate the trust of one of my mercenaries. Anything they tell me in confidence would never be used against them, or used to embarrass them. Third, I'd never show unwarranted anger or bitterness towards a mercenary. I'd never use my personal feelings as an excuse to treat them poorly. With these rules, I sought to create an environment of trust. Nobody necessarily had to like each other, but we had to work in a conducive manner. I never wanted to be the type of authority figure to attack my own team. I'd be the leader I wish I had when I was younger. All my work has been for naught. Because there's a traitor in my team and I don't know who it is. I have my suspicions, of course, but I could never act on suspicion alone. My mistake with Yuri was never acting. He was the most out of place, older and unnerving. I always knew something was off about him, but the king had appointed him himself. Then again, I never really trusted the king's judgment. From now on, everyone is a suspect, until I can rule them out. It's a safe bet that Surin and Catalina aren't the spy. Prince Zane considers Surin family and Lena is far too smitten with the prince to betray him. The others don't exactly like the prince. He's not a likable man. He doesn't have to be. And nobody has ever actively disobeyed him in a dangerous way. The only person who's fought with him recently is Jacob. I'll admit it, I feel guilty about reporting him. But he should have known better, and if he's resorted to treason, then that's his own fault. I've been keeping an eye on him. At the moment, I'm waiting outside of his room, hidden from sight. I've been waiting here since four in the morning. He isn't working today, and I need to see where he goes. However, it's nearly sunset, and he hasn't left at all. It's concerning. He hasn't come outside to eat or relieve himself. For a moment, I thought I had lost track of him, but no, he's still in his room. My first thought is that he could be planning something, scheming in the darkness of his own space. Then I remember that I haven't seen much of Jacob at all in the past few weeks. At the meeting last month, he seemed fine. 
He talked quietly, and he did his job. That was all that mattered. I haven't run into him at breakfast like I used to. He just acts... dull. If Jacob isn't taking care of himself, he's going to put everyone in jeopardy. If he's the traitor, he's going to put everyone in jeopardy. I have to intervene regardless. Another hour passes. He still hasn't left his room. I leave my post for just a few minutes and return with a tray of food. I'm unsure of whether or not I should knock. <sighs> Silence. Did he leave? Uh, didn't I tell you mates to knock? I did knock. Captain. The floor of his room was covered in clothes, his bow half hanging off the wall. The air smelled stale. I brought you dinner. I'm not really hungry. When's the last time you've eaten? I'll eat. Jacob, what's the matter? To be honest, I don't feel like discussing that right now. Are you feeling sick? No. You can't just isolate yourself. I'm doing my job, aren't I? Why should you concern yourself with what I do on my day off? Because you're going to end up hurting yourself if you keep acting like this. Jacob, what's wrong? I just... I really miss her. <sighs> Jacob... No, I know what you're thinking, and that argument isn't fair. You know, I never got to say what I really wanted to say to her. The last thing I told her was a lie. I told her I thought we weren't right for each other. I... I made her cry. And I didn't have a choice. It was my fault. It was my fault for breaking my contract, and I've regretted signing that stupid fucking contract this entire time. I only flirted with her to get information. I didn't think it'd go this far. I'm sorry, but Jacob, you'll have to move on eventually. It's not that simple. I would have married her if I had the chance. Marriage? Don't you think that maybe, maybe you rushed into some things? Not with her. She, she's so refreshing and positive. She takes the bad in life and moves forward with it. She came here all alone without a penny to her name and strove to make a life for herself without even taking a second to process it. The day I met her, she gave me this because she noticed I chewed on my pens. Why would she bother doing that? I... I don't know. It's just, I've been with many people, but I never loved a person like I loved her would wake up in dread starting my day, but when I met her, I was so excited. I patrol the halls looking for her. She was always smiling. She reminds me of my mother in that way. <sighs> maybe, maybe that's why it's so hard to let go of her. <sighs> my mother, she passed away when I was, well, I was young. And I just remember that whenever I cried, she'd hold my face and wipe away my tears. And she was so gentle. I miss her so much. <laughs> I 
house stopped being a home after she passed. <laughs> Nobody at home ever really cared about me except for her. She was... She was so good at everything. You know, she taught me how to play the violin. She did? Yeah. I was really bad at it at first. Then on my birthday, she got me that. She got it custom made. Out of rosewood. She even got my name carved into the bridge. I don't know where she got the money for it. When I looked at it, I knew I couldn't just give up. Not when she wanted to share this part of her that she held so dearly to her heart with me. She sounds lovely. She was. And then after she passed, my father tried to sell the violin. I freaked out. I punched him in the face and I just couldn't stop screaming at him. It was the most important thing I had ever been gifted and from her. He gave me hell for it. Beat the shit out of me. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I'm pretty sure he hates me. It's fine, because I hate him more. I hate him so much more. I was just a kid, and he took all of his anger out on me and only me. He put all the pressure on me to be a man. And to do something useful for once, so I, I joined the academy and just never looked back. I haven't seen him since. I regret it. Regret what? Coming here to work for the prince. Really? Yeah. I hate him. What? I know I shouldn't, but I do. I can't help but hate him after everything he's done to me. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I showed up late once. Once! It's such bullshit. Why is he so fixated on our personal affairs? It's so strange, especially because it was really Anne. I know she saved his life and everything, but was it really necessary to sit down with her every week and chit-chat? She's just a maid. She was so nervous at the dinner back then. Why couldn't he just stay out of it? I love her. My goddess, I love her so much. <laughs> he sobs for a few minutes as I sit there, rubbing his back. I truly do care for Jacob. <laughs> Seeing him in pain makes my heart ache in a way I forgot it could. Sorry. I know you don't like people touching you. Don't worry about it. <sighs> I'm sorry, Sayoko. You shouldn't be here babysitting me. No, don't be sorry. It's good to talk about your feelings. Letting things build up is dangerous. Jacob, things are going to be okay. You need to make an effort to take care of yourself. You're never going to move on if not. It's hard. I know. I'll help you. But you have to help yourself. <laughs> Okay. You should start by cleaning up. A clean space makes a clear mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sayoko? Yes? Thank you. For listening, I mean. Of course. The poor man. I didn't know how he'd react if he found out Lady Anne was in love with the prince 
and I was afraid to find out. I don't think he'd do anything dangerous, which is the most important thing. At this point, I don't consider Jacob a threat, and I doubt he's a traitor. He's just a man in pain. Still, this leaves me with more questions than answers. Things would have made more sense if he was, in fact, the rebel. I hate being unsure. It makes me look weak. Hey there, it's me, Giselle, and you're listening to episode 14 of He Who Forsakes the Crown. And I just want to thank you so much for listening. Happy 4th of the month. I think the best thing about any 4th of the month ever is that He Who Forsakes the Crown updates that day. We are listening to episode 14, Everyone Does Some Adjusting. That was true, everyone did do some adjusting. Uh, I quite like the chapters in this episode. I think this was when we started getting into our writing frenzy, where we wrote like a single chapter every single day. So things get pretty interesting, I think. Of course, time for me to say all the standard things, but you should be doing them, and if you're not, then I'm sad. Follow us on Instagram and Tumblr at Chapter 15 Studios. 15 is always the number. And follow us on Twitter at CH15 Studios because Chapter didn't fit the character limit. You can always check out our website, www.chapter15studios.com. And you can find all sorts of fun stuff. Recently, I've been promoting a mercenary campaign where you get to see drawings of all our mercenaries and some voice lines. Just a way to showcase our voice actors and really show our appreciation for them. Hey, if you're enjoying You Who Forsakes the Crown... Tell your friends, post about us, tweet at us. We are everywhere. Love to talk. Love to talk about it. Love to talk to you. And we love to engage in all of this. So please, if you're enjoying, take a listen. Tell your friend to listen. I sure do. That's all I really have to say for this episode. I'm going to let you guys get back to it. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you guys in August. All right now. Bye. Call her into my office. Your Highness? Why are you still standing there? I told you to call her in. I'm sorry, Your Highness, but why do you request her presence? It's not within your authoritative power to question me, maid. I didn't ask for the attitude. I told you to respond to a simple request. My apologies, Your Highness. I shouldn't have questioned your authority. Are you trying to shame your family? Shame? Disrespecting me? In this state? I'm sorry, Your Highness. How am I offending you? You're quite idiotic, aren't you? If you weren't wasting my time standing here like you are currently, instead of actually getting her, I wouldn't be so upset. Now would I? You're right, Your Highness. So? Yes, Your Highness? Odette, dear, it'd be best if you left. I don't think you want to anger His Royal Highness. Yes, my lady. Your royal highness? Leave us. Yes, your highness. Your royal highness? Oh, there's no need for that, dear. <laughs> Come now, don't keep me waiting. How was your day, really, Anne? It's been great. I saw white swans on my way here. In the castle? <laughs> no, in the garden. The garden? Why would there be swans in the garden? I saw them in the fountain. They were quite pretty. How intriguing. Come now, let's sit. So, how was your day, Zane? Well... Well? Well... I signed off on many guard graduates' forms. Forms? To become royal guards. They just don't get sent here? No, not precisely. I spent years observing their talent, seeing how they could benefit the kingdom. I was curious about that, actually. Hmm? Where do you find these people? You have such an odd cast of characters. It's a bit hard to explain, but... Anyone is talented enough when you have money. How, though? Well, if someone can fight really well, and you offer them a million ven to protect your items, they'll become the best fighter out there. Isn't that 
a bribe? <laughs> what? No. Like, I understand paying for a service, but a million is a lot of money. Not really. I'm sorry. What? It's not as much as you think it is. How so? Homes near the dock are sometimes three, maybe four million ven. Why are houses that expensive? It's the game of money. But don't all the remaining finances return here? Yes and no. Well, let's not talk about this right now. Right. Right. Captain Kyrie has two years left in his position. It won't be long until I have to pick out a new prodigy. Captain Kyrie? Like Captain Kina? Oh, no. Captain Kyrie is the captain of the guard. The head guard, if you will. Then what are the remnant mercenaries? They are my personal guards. They don't seem like it. The only one you seem to be close with is the captain. The others stay distant. They just need to do their job. That's all I ask of them. But what is their job other than patrolling the halls on a day-to-day -day basis? I can't really tell you that. Why not? <sighs> Your entire time here has everything appeared as it seems. For the most part, yes. Interesting. I think you'll be in for quite the surprise. The realization of one of my mercenaries being a traitor was starting to hit. Rebellion ideals have always been shaky in my perspective. It seemed as if they were too obsessed with the performative aspect of it all. Flashy light shows and confusing poems. How could any of them align with that type of thing? I should have noticed the signs. My intuition is rarely off. This would have been so much easier if Jacob was a traitor. It's fine. We're fine. I'm fine. It's no big deal. Hello, Surin. Is there something on your mind? I suppose so. <sighs> something has been off lately. Hmm. Things aren't as they should seem. It keeps me on edge. Makes me distrustful of others. The atmosphere only grows more tense with each year. You think so? Mm-hmm. The demeanor is entirely different than the last decade. Everyone is becoming so restless. They seem to forget the meaning of security. I'm not sure I understand. Security goes beyond external measures. The lack of security in oneself is what leads to rash decisions and misjudgments. The distrust you feel will not subside without self-security. Trust yourself and your judgment. Nobody can understand others like they can themselves. And if I need to understand others? Well... That is difficult, but it is doable. Observe. See what they're secure about. See if their smaller misjudgments are a fragment of larger stories. Look for the piece that is out of place. Hmm. And you? Are you secure in yourself? I don't believe full security can ever be attained. It's similar to chasing the horizon. You can sail as far as you wish, but you'll never touch it. Don't you think that's a bit morbid? Not particularly. It's only natural. Perfection doesn't exist in nature. It shouldn't exist within humans. How ironic. That's an interesting outlook to have. My interpretation satisfies myself. It's up to you to determine the same. Well, I'll have to think on that. It isn't my fault. None of this is my fault. I'm going to look into each and every one of them 
and find every little piece of evidence I can get. Every single piece will fit perfectly. I'm going to end it before it can begin. Your Highness, this isn't going to work. Maybe in your mind. How would courting a girl fit into the puzzle? I have to seem unappealing to her, don't I? Prince Zane, you're thinking quite selfishly if you think this is going to work. You have a lot of gall if you think you can talk to me like that. I'd have to agree with them. I don't see how this fits into the equation. You've experienced it yourself, Princess Iris, Prince Aspen. Yes. Of course. Women of her kind are simple creatures. They see something they want and try to obtain it. They don't see the ramifications of their actions until after the fact. Ah, I see. You do, Aspen? Zane's right. It might be the most effective way to take them down. Thank you, Vincent. It may be more difficult than it seems. It may be, but we have the advantage. We know what we're dealing with. That reminds me. Prince Aspen. Yes, Your Highness? Have you found out anything about him? I have, but it'll be difficult to get to him. He's her favorite. It'll be hard to convince her to let him go. Then, let's not convince. Your Highness, please. These are such outrageous ideas. We can't just march up there with armies and take him by force. We'll start a war. Must you think so one-dimensionally? One-dimensionally? Obviously I'm not going to waltz up there. It's quite insulting for you to think that I'm that idiotic. Please, Your Highness. Maintain your composure. Right. I apologize. What do you plan on doing with him? I was... wondering the same thing. Well... The name does sound quite familiar. He's an old friend of mine. Take that! <sighs> Come on! Strike me! Strike you? You say? <sighs> You're becoming quite the old man. You're right behind you. <sighs> I thought you've mastered each weapon. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Who's the old man now? Just luck. He's good for his age. Now, where were we? Kisume grabbed another spear from the supply pile, spinning it, stabbing it into the ground. Jacob lunged at Kisume once more, sword in hand. Unsheathing the spear from the mud, Kisume spun his spear, keeping distance between him and Jacob. Jacob struck his blade into the spear, putting it upright in Kisume's hands. Now he's in trouble. No. Thanks, Leah. Thank me later. Behind you! Kitayan appeared, striking at Jacob. Quickly he rolled out of her way as she struck the soft earth. She spun her blade, getting the right grip on it. Leah, run! I'll get you free, but you have to help me. Got it. Leah pulled the spear out of the wall, throwing it at Riley. <clears throat> Riley paused, smacking it out of the way. Kuro grabbed his axe, lunging at her. Riley lunged forward as well, their blades clashing. Leah ran towards Jacob, picking up the spear. Katayan spun her blade, preparing for the both of them to strike. Suddenly, pink orbs appeared around them, locking their legs in place. Nice job, Catalina. Let's try something different. What the? Her fingertips had a whimsical pink smoke as she moved her arms around. An orb appeared around Jacob, dispersing into a cloud of smoke. Catalina, this isn't funny! Shh. Now sleep. Catalina, you are playing an unfair game. Fight like the rest of us. I wasn't hired for fighting. I was hired for magic. Get used to it. 
I'm so tired of being disrespected by all of you. Just because I don't have the physical strength to fight, I am equally, if not more strong than all of you. What are you trying to prove? My strength. I'm the only one here who knows how to use the remnant. And I'll show you true strength. That's enough, Catalina. Saren, when did you- Don't put your frustrations out on other people. But she- We're just sparring. What did she do to warrant her demise? Mm. I thought so. Good job, everyone. I see that we're all improving greatly. Can you wake him up? I... I don't know. What? I was testing out the remnant. I don't really know how to use it. So you decided to use one of your comrades as a lab rat? Well... Never mind. Someone wake him up. I think he's out. Out. Oh, Enyo. <sighs> anyway, good job, everybody. We did good? Catalina just tried to end me. Oh, hush up. You need to drop that attitude, miss, before I beat it out of you. Oh, I like to see you try. <laughs> you think you're so special, huh? Not having to work hard every single day of your life. All you do is sit in that little library of yours. You really have to patrol. You barely even put in any work. Because I'm not a meathead like the rest of you. Oh, you're gonna get it. Catalina, you're acting like a child. Stop it. Oh, I'm acting like a child. Have you seen Kisume? Hey, don't want me into this. Kisume is a little boy, trying to act all manly in hopes that he'll impress someone to feed his ego. Whoa there, Catalina. You're taking things a bit Don't too- Don't get me started on you, Gero Nanako. You sleep with any woman you can get your hands on. Must have mommy issues, huh? And you, Sayako. You are trying to be the big, strong, mysterious leader, but you're nothing but a fraud. The several times the prince needed to be protected, you failed! You should have been stripped of your position and returned back to being nothing more than a regular guard. Catalina? What? You're upset, aren't you? Well, of course I am! You're I... upset that he doesn't love you. No, that's not my fault! I never said it was. It's that idiot girl's fault! She's the one that made a prince fall for her! She didn't do anything. She bewitched him! She's not a witch. Yes, she is! I can feel her aura. Stop lying through your teeth! How else can someone fall for an idiot like her? I can understand why his royal highness doesn't love you. What? You care more about intelligence than the content of your character. You may be beautiful on the outside, but you're disgusting on the inside. Look around at everyone you've insulted. All because a single man couldn't reciprocate feelings for you. I'm... sorry. Hey, don't sweat it. We all make mistakes. You're just letting out your grievances on the battlefield. Yeah. Take a deep breath, Catalina. All right. Uh, how long was I out? Oh, God. You're alive. What? Yeah, mate. We thought Catalina killed you. Catalina? You tried to murder me? What? No. I'm just kidding. You just took a little nap on the ground. No. What'd I miss? Nothing too important. We should probably head in before a storm hits. I don't want your armor to rust. What about you, Captain? Me? Didn't you want to spar with us? Next time. It's not very ladylike to fight in rain. We head back into the barracks, taking off our armor and cleaning our weapons. Catalina headed back to the library, most likely to ponder her feelings. It's selfish of her to think in that way. She can't decide what's best for His Royal Highness. I've tried it before. It doesn't work. 
You listen to him, he doesn't listen to you. He doesn't pay us for advice. He pays us for protection. Protection he normally doesn't want. Why is that? Is he hit- Captain. Should I come back later? You seem lost in thought. Uh, no, you're all right. What? Can I come in? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sit wherever you like. So, what's wrong? Mind if I? I'd rather if you didn't. Fair enough. You know, I was awake for most of that conversation. He Who Forsakes the Crown is an audio drama written and produced by Chapter 15 Studios, starring Julia Orsborne as Rillianne Duvon, Eric Smith as Zane DeMonte, Chara Lynn as Sayoko Kina, Nick Richardson as Jacob Windham, Shoki Sama as Saren Vento, Michael Najman as Prince Aspen, Gauntlet Knight as Iris, Lost Boy VO as Kyrie, Rodrigo Tamayo as Kuro Nakano, Polaris as Leah, Andrew Bonilla as Kisume, Sabrina May as Riley, Zoe Absher as Catalina, Rin Uzuki as Vincent, and Bella Cherish as Odette. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you next time on He Who Forsakes the Crown.